poison ivy, and I'll put a picture up here. It, it's something that you don't want to touch if you see this three-leafed, three-leaved plant, I guess you could say. There is actually an oil in all parts of the poison ivy plant, and it is pronounced erushiel. That is the the actual substance that causes the rash in your skin when you are exposed to the poison ivy or the poison ivy plant. And the oil can actually be found in all parts of the plant. It doesn't matter if it's the root, the leaf, the stem, all of it. It can be found in every single part of it. That oil can actually stay or live on poison ivy, in poison ivy for years sometimes, even after it being dead. And so that's su something super important to recognize that even it doesn't even have to be a live plant for you to get um, the poison ivy rash. It's likely that you probably, if you had a rash and maybe it didn't look like exactly how the poison ivy rash looks, that it might have been poison ivy. I, I think there was a statistic that I saw somewhere that said 85% of people who, if, when they're exposed to the oil that caught in the poison ivy that causes it, they will get the rash. And of course, there's things that you can do to prevent um, that rash from happening, even if you've had that exposure. But we'll get into that in a little bit of detail. Um, it's not contagious. Um, can't get it from person to person. So anyways, it's actually an allergic reaction and I would say If another person was exposed to something though that we had the oil on then they can get it as well And so a lot of people think oh, it's it's contagious and it's not contagious So that's just important to recognize that we can't see we can't see the oil and so you don't know what objects that it was on, but it's most likely near if that person that you see with the rash has that. So, another name that we call poison ivy when you actually get the rash is contact dermatitis. And that makes sense because you're touching something that you've gotten in contact with something that's causing that irritation, that inflammation to your skin. Um, it can be in streaks, in lines, um, vesicles, or blisters, for another word for it. Um, and it may be on various parts. It can go any part of your body, including around your eyes. I've had some patients before where it actually got into their eyes, and that's a very bad thing if that happens. And it also can go into your lungs as well. And that is also a very, very bad thing if that happens. So now that we know that it's on every single part of the plant, how do you how does it transfer now we hear the word contact dermatitis so obviously we know we contact it or we touch it we know we're going to get it most people understand that hey if i touch some poison ivy i'm not going to be rubbing it on my face and and getting a little facial with poison ivy no you're not going to be doing that i mean but there are other ways that you can get it and one is by actually touching contaminated objects so if you were out gardening and you had your gloves on and you touched some poison ivy and you were had a tool that was you know messing in the poison ivy or whatever then that definitely is a great way to get that op that onto an object and then if someone else touches it or you touch it, it that oil if the oil's on there from the plant then it can get transferred to you so another way is actually inhaling it now that sounds kind of crazy but there are some people who burn the plant because they think that's helping to get rid of it or you could be burning something else let's say like you have like a fire pit or something like that and somehow there was some poison ivy that was placed in it or something on the ground if you burn it then the smoke can actually you can inhale it and then get kind of poison ivy in your lung basically and that's very bad so there are certain things with poison ivy that you really should be super precautious with um, getting in your eyes on your face um, if you've got it all over your body if you inhale it those are things that can be very bad very quickly and of course getting secondary infections from poison ivy rashes if you're scratching and you get a little extra infection if you get an infection in there and then yeah then everything breaks loose 
Now, personally, I, knock on wood, I do not tend to get poison ivy. In fact, I cannot even remember a time when I had poison ivy. Um, so, and I think I, I don't know if I've just been outside so much, dirt, digging in the dirt and all the, and planting and things like that, trimming bushes and all that kind of stuff that it just doesn't, I'm not as sensitive to it. But one of the things that I wanted to mention though, with that, and I don't want to jinx myself because I believe in jinxing yourself. One of the things that I did want to mention is that always what I do when I come from outside right away sometimes my skin will feel a little bit itchy and I will wash my skin really well with soap and water because I can already feel it getting a little itchy from who knows what so I usually wash it if I worked with my arms and I'll wash it from even here up even if I don't feel anything and I wash it all the way down same thing with my legs as well and so that might be part of the reason why I don't tend to get the poison ivy rash ever which like I said I, I don't know if that's something that I'm just less sensitive to or what the deal is, but that's a great way to prevent it. It can last anywhere from two to three weeks and it is just insane with the itching. Some people come in, I remember patients that would come in and just the itching just drove them nuts and so the time. A lot of people will use hydrocortisone. Um, that is a lower strength steroid cream that basically helps to just calm that inflammation down and helps with the rash and basically get rid of it. Now sometimes people do need a um, higher dose steroid, a prescription steroid cream. And in some instances, people actually need a actual steroid, an oral steroid. Now, I would not say ever to jump straight to the oral steroid, even if that's something that you've had in the past that has controlled the poison ivy. And the reason why I say this is there's so many side effects with steroids that it's just really not worth it because there are, you, a lot of people don't realize that a steroid suppresses your immune system. And so, you know, we have people who are transplants who are on steroids and so it suppresses your immune system so it increases your risk to get sick. And then not only with that, there is also different kinds of side effects like um, people get moody, weight gain, they'll get hungrier, uh, swelling in their legs. Um, there's just so many different, uh, decreased potassium. So there's so many different things that can happen with steroids and you have to be very cautious. So I would not jump there first unless your body was entirely covered with poison ivy. And in that case, I would be concerned about that. A lot of times too, if it's on your face and it's an area, like if your eyes are swollen up, that might be a good idea to be seen in that situation because um, that can be very bad if it gets into your eyes and a lot of the creams, that, the steroid creams, you really don't want to, higher strength, you don't want to use on your face um, or you shouldn't as much, I should say, um, just because it's thinner skin there. Same thing with your armpits and so you want to be very cautious about using any kind of steroid cream on your face. A lot of times poison ivy, sometimes it can actually go away on its own as well. So that's something to recognize is you don't always necessarily have to have medicine every single time. But if it's on a big percentage of your body, there's a good chance, or if you're seeing blisters, or it's itching like crazy, a lot of times you may need to be on some medicine just to kind of calm that area down and help get over that itching and that irritation that your body is having. So. is antihistamine. So because the, the steroid or because the poison ivy rash can be so itchy, it, it a lot of times helps to take an antihistamine. Um, but kind of knowing with antihistamines too, so you think of antihistamines that are over the counter. Benadryl is one, one that people like to go to if they're not usually taking antihistamine. A lot of times it does work really well, but it has a, it's an older generation antihistamine that has a lot more side effects like um, dry mouth, blurred vision, urine retention, constipation, all of those things. And so it does tend to have a lot more of those type of side effects, and if someone is older, that increases even more and increased risk for confusion and falls, things like that. So a lot of times we like to use the second generation or the newer generation antihistamines like Allegra, Zyrtec, Claritin, or the generic um, Claritin, 
or sorry, the generic is loratadine, um, cetirizine, and fexofenadine. So those are the um, generics of that. And so those are just a few of the main ones, basically, that a lot of times we'll tell patients to take. And that usually helps to control the itching, but there's other things you can do too. I mean, a lot of times people do like soothing oatmeal baths and there's different over-the-counter products. And some of them, you know, you pay a lot of money for and they don't do anything. And so definitely starting with those things first, the steroid cream does help quite a bit along with the antihistamine and then you know if you're having um, the rash all over your face or on a big percentage of your body you might want to be seen and if it's getting worse and you're not feeling better it could be potentially something else as well so Another thing too that I wanted to mention is that a lot of times people will get the poison ivy rash and because they're itching so much, they end up with a secondary infection. Now that secondary infection can be very bad. It can lead to things like cellulitis and um, eventually even sepsis. So if you are aware of those things are, they're not good. You don't want them. It's definitely something that you want to try to avoid if you can. And that's why that itching of what, you know, trying to prevent that is so important because that actually can cause a secondary rash we keep a lot of um, bacteria under our nails and that's an easy way for it to get in there so some ways to prevent from getting poison ivy one way that is super important is like I said before right when you come in from the outdoors wash take a shower I mean that that's probably the best thing to do and then just make sure you're using soap and getting every area and try to do that within 30 minutes from being outside. Now, the other thing about that is too, you have to think about the the clothes that you were using or the tools that you're using or whatever it was that you were using when you were outside. Um, you, I would probably wash those clothes immediately and I would probably also make sure to wash the tools that you were using in like soapy warm water. So that takes care of that. Now dogs can actually carry the oil as well. So sometimes giving the dogs a bath might be a good idea as well. Um, well, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to our channel. I also want to end with an inspirational message for you. Um, so stay tuned for that and I will try to do this in most videos. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and enjoy your spring or whatever time of the year that you're in. Just one of the things that over the last few weeks is I really tried to just take in nature and breathing and enjoy every minute of like what I'm doing. This last month that I've really done is I have just soaked in the sun. I enjoyed the weather I've, I've enjoyed it. i remember that hey that it's gonna get hot in uh, two months or so and i just want to make sure to remember these times because things change and never know like what can change like and that's something that i find so profound in life is that like in ourselves like just you know even in school like this is just if you're in school and you feel like you're just struggling and you and you feel like you're just have an hard time, just remember that's not always gonna last and that things can change. And vice versa, when you're having good times, just learn to just appreciate for what things are and to be able to just live and breathe and just take things for what they are and be human and like just enjoy things because there's only one life and I am definitely not going to live life regretting it. And you have to remember that and you have to appreciate things in that moment because it's truly a gift when you are able to um, have sunlight shining on you or have the trees bloom and it makes you appreciate that even more when you come from winter. So with that being said, if you're in school right now and you're struggling or if you're at a job that you're struggling and you're like, I don't know what to do and, and you know that you can't leave those things or stop those things right now, definitely you may consider looking for something different or looking forward to graduation, looking for a new job. But while you have to be where you are, look for the things that are good and look for the things that you appreciate. And then, and you know, when you have those great things, when they eventually end up coming, you'll appreciate them even so much more. Appreciate what you have, find goodness in everything and just appreciate it, enjoy it. If Relax, find time for yourself and enjoy the spring. 
Well guys, until the next video, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Also make sure to subscribe, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you later. Bye guys, take care.